Had a Glenorchy plan. We only need two pages, not 100. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just use the things you have, people. Yeah. Well, they already exist. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the whole plan for the next 30 years. Use what you got. <laughs> <laughs> going one, going quiet, no. All right, gang, it's your rough and tumble, ready to roll, MKH Contracting sponsored podcast, The Property Pod. I'm your host, Darren Horn, and I'm joined, as always, by MKH Contracting wearing superstar Patrick Berry. Hey, everyone, how's it going? And I don't know if John got the memo, but John is also wearing some contracting gear today. Unfortunately, I didn't have any MKH gear because I'm still waiting for my MKH <laughs> yeah, contracting gear. Don't worry, it'll be in the mail. <laughs> Looking forward to getting my MKH contracting gear. <laughs> I feel like the dream is you start a podcast and all you want is somebody out there to listen and be like, geez, I wish they'd talk about me on that podcast. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to send them some stuff. <laughs> and if you do, MK's contracting, we, we wear it. <laughs> all I can think of is that scene from um, uh, Wayne's World where they, they he's, wearing, he's wearing the full Reebok and he's going, it's like people only do things because they get paid. And, and that's really sad, you know. <laughs> Totally agree, but shout out to <laughs> Pat's good mates at uh, MKH Contracting. They have provided us with some very, very nice attire here. Mm, they also comfy. do a really good job at moving dirt and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, what they do, but they also make yeah, some nice yeah, clothes. Yeah. <laughs> As it turns out. So, Pat, tell us all about the sponsorship you've got us. Oh, well, I've so far hooked us up with one hoodie and one T-shirt. As, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're really rising up here at the property. <laughs> but so I'm pumped I, I, about I didn't that. get anything, but hey, that's a good start as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> well, I just share my merch yeah. to be able to get Aaron in some. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the tricky bit is, for everyone out there listening, if you heard last week, um, Pat mentioned his friends, um, Marcus and Kirsten. Marcus yes. and Kirsten. They, uh, they like to listen to us as they go to sleep. So we said, oh, maybe we're boring and we... We don't um, keep them interested. But now they're going to be so interested they won't be able to sleep. They'll be jumping in, up in bed just thinking like, yes, yes we're famous for all their listeners. <laughs> all 35. <laughs> yeah. but, no, look, I'll shout out that um, Sam last week on the show, all his people out there in his greater world, our show went gangbusters out there. I'll tell you what, it did. All the way up to Bernie, I saw we had comments from people up there and like, man, Sam has got some serious connections out there, so exciting to see what he can do. Yeah, no, it was it was a really, really good episode with Sam talking on the show last week and it was really, really uh, well received from a few people reaching out and saying, fix up his hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we will work on that uh, as we get deeper into his 414 um, career. Well, no doubt he'll be listening to this week's episode while he's up at Derby riding down the trails, probably have those headphones in and just... I could just imagine, maybe we've got a six-month you know, a six month hair update. I is want it? to know how he keeps that hair so good under that helmet of his. Yeah, well, can I say, I don't know, he'll listen to this and I want to see if he <laughs> comes back, but can I say, as I was editing the podcast together, he had this real Harvey Specter kind of Ooh, look about him. You know, oh. um, Suits, the TV show, have you guys <laughs> nice. watched that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just, like, if you catch him in the right angle, I was like, there's a little Harvey Specter <laughs> going on there, so hopefully he's well, good at wheeling his deal. I was going to say, Harvey gets the job done, so, you know, fingers <laughs> crossed he has the same traits. <laughs> Indeed. All right, enough banter for this morning, let's jump straight into... Uh, some of our show. We're planning to talk a bit about the community of Tasmania at the moment. Mm. Um, I thought we'd cover off on the ferry, the uh, the late latest trial there. Talk a little bit about the weather that came on in and, and did a bit of damage and then um, I think talk about Kingston and the pool down there. Ariane Titmus has got us all excited about swimming here in Tassie. Yeah. And the, thought we it, could cover off on a few of those topics. And if we've got time too, the... Um, the no, home no home. time for whatever topic you bring up. <laughs> well, the, the real estate specific one around Airbnb. <laughs> you know, we don't have time, we don't have time. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Here's what it is. Yeah. We're construction boys now. This yeah, yeah, is actually that's right. Cold. No, we just right. want to know about diggers and <laughs> oh, excavators can, and bobcats. I can see some waterproofing still stuck on these pants. Uh, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> so first thing I wanted to cover off today, we'll get to the real estate stuff, John. Thank you for bringing that up. But, um, <laughs> okay, I like the idea of talking about the weather. It sounds lovely. <laughs> well, no, this is, this is kind of cool. <laughs> see, that's Sky Today, boys. Talk well, look, let's jump into this. Look, we've got to episode 80-something and yeah. we've run out of content. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, Pat's stuck thinking we're, we're living in the 80s. We're in the 90s, mate. Yeah, the this 90s. is episode 91. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I told you this last week. I told you we'd never make 100. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're fast getting there, but we are talking about the weather, so yeah. <laughs> perhaps it, it's all over. We did get a sponsor on episode 91, though, so. Yeah. MKH, MKH Contracting. MKH Contracting. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so I want to talk about the, the new ferry. So it is kind of real estate related because we're talking about the city. We're talking about um, how they're trying to get people off the roads and they're trying to bring... Um, um, kind of a new travel corridor. We've talked about the travel corridor mm. of perhaps a train running um, from 
the northern suburbs into the city. Yeah. This is a ferry. So this is the ferry system that started up on the 9th of August. Um, it is in a one-year trial period and it, it seems to be going pretty well. Well, oh. well, when they first start these initiatives, everyone wants to have a go, don't they? Yeah, exactly. It'll be how it goes in six months' time. Ah, uh, so you feel like they're just sticky beaking at the moment and in six months – well, the funny thing is it's winter, so you'd think this would be the time you wouldn't want to be on the water. Uh, mm. But yeah, people bike. are out there giving it a go. Well, bikes have become popular and I think you can ride for free at the moment if you've got a bike. Yeah, so I think there's like 15 spaces for bikes on each um, or on the ferry. It can take up to 107 passengers. Um, it leaves from Bell Reeve, comes across to um, Princess Wharf, and um, I think there's like 15 crossings a day, kind of seven in the morning, seven at night or eight at night or something like that. Is it docking to Brook Street Pier or is it docking elsewhere? Do we know that or <laughs> we don't? I don't think I have those details here. That's if you have uh, been on it and uh, you want to give us a review and let us know how it was and where it does stop, I'd say that would be where it would It'd be dangerous if for me because, like, you know, you've got the bar and all the whiskeys upstairs. Like every night get off work, <laughs> waiting the for the ferry to come. <laughs> <laughs> in the morning have a hot toddy on the way. To <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's some good stuff in that Brook Street Pier. Well, it looks like I'll be catching the ferry and I don't even live on the Eastern Shore. <laughs> well, look, here's, here's the good point of that. If you guys want to do that and partake in that, You've got the ferry. It takes you to where you need to be. You're off the road. You're not drink driving. <laughs> exactly so right. it's yeah. it's another safe way of uh, using some of Hobart's local um, eateries and um, hospitality venues. You get to use them. Exactly. You get to get on the ferry. If you live in Bell Reef Key, mm. boom, Bob's your uncle. Well, I think it's good. Like it's good seeing activity on the water. Like you've got the Mona Ferry going up and down constantly. Then you've got this going across and back um, constantly. 100%. It just it. seems like a no-brainer. Like if you think about Sydney with the Manly Ferries and all mm. that kind of stuff, like that's mm. kind of part of the the um, culture or yeah. the how good would a Kingston oh, yeah. to Hobart be? Like, yeah, well, there's like, no reason why they can't put something down there in Kingston Beach. Just you know, I don't <laughs> know. That is what stuff works, but it'd be cool. And this makes me sound cooler than I am. But even like when I was in Vancouver, they had the big ferry that went across the two uh, across the river that splits between them as well. Yeah, yeah. And there's heaps of people using that um, constantly. So I wonder um, if this is just one of those things where it needs to get into people, the people's minds and be like, oh, this is actually mm. a good idea. I know there was a bit of argument back and forth at the start. So, guys, it's not going to take off that much time, like really in your transit sort of thing. But it is a way of getting um, cars off the road. It's a way of you're not paying for um, your parking each day. Like that's a really expensive cost. So Absolutely. if you can, and look, I really like sitting down and doing nothing, not having to concentrate on the traffic and just being like, sweet, I've got 15 minutes to sit here, do my thing. Catch up with some people. I think there's um, bar facilities yeah, actually on the ferry. There is. Yeah. yeah. There's a little canteen and bar on board. See, there you go. So it might not be the posh pit of Mona, but <laughs> it might come one day. Yeah, and no, I think any way in which they try – and it's a slow build and it's – for Hobart, but where they can continue to develop these alternative ways of getting to and from home is brilliant. You know, the water, be hopefully, you know, train down the road, buses, cars and everything. And, I mean, realistically, if you think about on an average with people filling up a car, it's one or two people. It's mm. really that you've got four people driving into the city. You know, it's always usually just for yourself. Yeah. So you think about every road's taking probably at least 50 cars off the road in every trip. Well, you know? everyone's complaining about the traffic of the morning these days. Oh, Hobart's not what it used to be. There's too many cars on the road. It's yeah. flat stick busy. I'm like, well, there's options out there by the sound of it and maybe some people need to, to give here, it a go. Here you go, yeah, Pat. 100%. I've read further into our show notes and it does board at the Brook Street, Brook Street Pier. Ooh, ooh. So that's where you get on. So you can have your hot toddies, you can have your whiskey, you can do whatever you like. Get a nice uh, coffee upstairs and from the guys before you walk out the door. Yeah, exactly. So then yeah, it says here that um, payment is via your Metro green card. So it's set up with uh, Metro, the bus service. So if you've got mm. um, an, a, the ability to use that, you've got the ability to get onto the ferry. $350. $350. <laughs> yeah. <Look> <laughs> Includes a hot toddy. <laughs> $3.50 for an adult, two forty dollars for a concession and a dollar eighty for child or student. So really quite affordable way if, if you're taking that out of um, your weekly budget, if you're doing that a few times over, it's going to be way cheaper than having to find a car park, park for the whole day. I know um, car parking well, prices went up recently in the Hobart City. I think the only thing that could break it down at this point in the trial in my thoughts is that fantastic if you live in Bellary of Key area. Like boom, on the ferry, cross yep. you go, you're done. Yeah. But if you've got a commute, to there to catch the ferry, then what's the advantage versus commuting to town via bus or car? Yeah, I w the, and where do you put your car? I was going to say get to the ferry. Like the so one, the one thing seems to be the parking there at Bell Reeve. To, so you've got to, got to set up a place to park for everybody that is going to catch the ferry because mm -hmm. yeah. otherwise it's yeah, a bit of a yeah. moot point. I think to make it successful, you need to almost have like a free parking 
garage there. Yep. Like that holds a couple of thousand cars that is exclusively for people that are using the ferry service. Mm, mm. So, yeah, I think that's where the, the chink might come as far as it not being as potentially successful as it could be. Yeah, always. And I guess hopefully maybe in this trial period it'll be see, you know, what the uptake is and the excitement of actually catching yeah. it. And then if it, you know, continues to but yeah, know, then you those got, numbers, it was like, okay, now there's a justification. Like you got Linda's Farm. That'd be another great spot for one. Um, Gasp. What a great spot Gasp would be. They've got oh, all yeah. that wasteland oh, yeah. out there that could be a giant car park. Put a ferry there and just travel into town. Actually, that's really clever yeah. because like you literally get out to that end of gasp and it feels like oh there. this is the spot i'm meant to jump on a boat yeah at. yeah it's already got the dock there yeah and a massive car park there at the yeah. um, my state arena stadium so. yeah so mm. like plus it's got all that big area at the back that's undeveloped yet like Mate, we be, should be in council what we are should we be doing? what are we doing you where's need to do great? a yaxley and get out there and try <laughs> and get where's, in. where's <laughs> that greater glenorchy plan we only need two pages not one hundred. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Just use the things you have, people. Yeah. Well, they already exist. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the whole plan for the next 30 years. Use what you got. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, looks like a good idea. Be interesting to see where it goes. Hope Look, it goes well. The only reason I wanted to bring up weather in today's show was mm. also because that. you need a dot point? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, the, I thought we'd get to the point where being on the river can be really quite cold um, and it, that might be a deterrent as well. I know it's a enclosed. Um, boat ferry, but I thought being on the river it could be quite cold, especially this morning. Did you guys clock that photo of the guy walking along Bell Reef Beach with the snow up on the on Mount Wellington? No, oh, oh, I can imagine. Look. Amazing. I'll see if I can find it. I'll I'll plug it into the show notes. But yeah. essentially, it was kind of like imagine walking along this beach, which is normally you know sunny and beautiful, but it was just really moody. So snow fell down to like four hundred meters. It was low. It yeah. was low. Like yeah, and it's so weird. It's the end of winter, but it fell so low. Because it really... What was weird was a Monday a week ago, beautiful sunny day wearing a T-shirt, Monday seven days later and the snow's all the way down the mountain. Well, even the following day you were sitting in the office here saying like, geez, I feel like I need my shorts. Like it's so different to yesterday. Well, someone told me the way to dress in Tassie is layers. So, you know, because it's cold. If it was named after a hotel, it's going to be the Four Seasons because it's just, you know, cold, wet, hot, soggy, and then then it goes up one and then... In the later half of the afternoon, you just dress all, you know, take all those layers off and then put them all back on again. Straight up Scotland, baby. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> you were born, you were born to be John. Yeah. yeah, you're right. <laughs> just, just give us some practical <laughs> advice. <laughs> we all now know how to wear a coat. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> well, I mean, there I, ain't I, no fur coat. Well, MKH it, contracting t shirt and coat. <laughs> Sponsored by. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, every time we announce, well, that's the weather now. Okay, uh, got drinking. Brought to you by weather. It is like on the footy where they, you know, like. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you know, you know what I say. You know what I say. <laughs> Hey, this is the first time I've had to do this. <laughs> and you didn't even get the merch. How are you here? Who is this? Brought to you yeah. by the. <laughs> Yeah, I've, uh, it's, it's, it's surprising I don't have a paid gig in radio. Right? <laughs> you were going somewhere with this story, though, and we've just stolen it from well, you. Well, when, uh, when one of the things I was talking about, there was one of the meteorologist is the was commenting on the you know the, the damaging elements of it as well. Yeah, so that's and, kind of where I wanted to go into. Like, I know you've contacted me two or three times about um, signs falling over. Yeah. So, so it's just one of those really tricky times when a massive cold front like this comes through. Like, we are right at the bottom of the world. So mm. when those roaring 40s come up from Antarctica sort of thing, they can really put a massive, massive um, impact on homeowners and people who are renting. I know wild weather comes in and you often get phone calls of, oh, this has oh, happened, yeah. that's happened. Yeah, well, we um, lost a roof on Sunday from the wind, so we had to contact SES to go out and protect the, the building for us. So. Yeah. Yeah, it gets pretty crazy there at times. <laughs> God, I mean, because you know, we've got 800 plus rental properties and I remember when we had our body's corporate management we were looking after um, overseeing about 1,100 different units and complexes um, and I, I remember developing um, phone anxiety during storms because I knew that the second, you know, that there was going to be kicking, my phone would be ringing hot like all night. <laughs> it's yeah, kicking, no, look, yeah. phone be ringing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just for all the wrong reasons, I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the, the crazy thing with, in that situation is you're sitting there and you're getting the anxiety of, oh, crap, my phone's going to ring. But yeah. you got to think of the person on the other end of the phone. Mm. They're sitting there thinking, oh, crap, my house is going to blow well, away well, or the roof's going to come off or this tree's going to fall on me. So yeah. it is anxiety-inducing with all of this stuff. So it's just another layer of property management and looking after um, tenants and, and 
rend- the renders. Hard, the hard yeah. thing is there's not a lot we can do when the storm's actually happening. Because oh, no. you no. can't send a trade up under the roof in a storm. It's no, like, exactly. Oh, it's, it's blowing a gale out there, but can you go get a big giant sheet of tin and carry it up under the roof to secure <laughs> that bit of <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> building? Cheers, old son. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that's really hard because tenants don't understand that. They're like, what do you mean someone can't come and fix my roof? I'm like... Well, I can't put yeah. someone else's safety at danger because a bit of the roof has come off. Yeah, you just got to grin and bear it. Yeah. Right? We'll, we'll have to wait until the storm passes and then we can look at getting a trade out to repair it. But wasn't that another thing with the when we're talking about the report about the most livable cities and the most desirable areas? Wasn't it that case where Tasmania, even though obviously we are going to suffer extremes, but it's on a, a lesser scale versus many different elements of the world? Oh, so don't yeah. Get like giant, you know. The storm here is not as bad as a storm in far north Queensland. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no, we're, yeah, we're exactly. cruising. Like, and yeah. Yes, no, it is, it is scary when they're coming through and it wasn't like – Detrimental with it, your sign fell over, and you were like, <laughs> like "Oh my god, <laughs> my sign fell!" <laughs> They're not gonna know it's for sale. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, it had the sold sticker on, so they don't know the results. <laughs> they don't know how well I yeah. did. <laughs> Quick, get off the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the end, it's just another subtle plug for Tassie. Let's yeah, face it. no, look, we're look. It's one of those uh, crazy things where the weather can be wild down here, but we also can live in a, a really safe and um, hospitable place. So, Well, which is probably not a bad a segue in the idea then of the um, the report that they're wanting to put pressure on the availability of Airbnb properties. Oh, um, he wants to get – he's keen to get this look, let's let him get it out there. He doesn't want to talk about Kingston. We'll talk about Kingston next the, week. I, I don't know. It seemed like a better segue <laughs> than a pool, all right? So I'm just putting it out there. Like, Mate, just because you're Scottish, you don't like swimming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you got about Airbnb, John? Well, this is where the, the – um, from a report that the university had released where they're making some recommendations on controlling the Airbnb market. Um, and then what through that proposal, they've um, with that research, they're proposing some series of um, changes to be made so that's going to um, hopefully have a, a an adverse effect or affect the Airbnb market with the idea hoping that it's going to free up some stock for the general um, rental um, area. Sure. But one of the things I thought – because I ended up having a little bit of a deep dive into the report itself um, because – That's the, why he wants to <laughs> talk about it because he actually That's read up this right. info. Well, I read the summary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, and I'm probably so, going to probably forget the core, the core <laughs> points. So it was a 500-page report and you read the paragraph at the Correct. top. Correct. <laughs> these, guy, you know, these guys have been doing an enormous amount of research and I just sit there and pretend like I'm the expert that's, for five minutes. It's like me when I'm wanting to buy a new product and I go to review the product and I yeah. scroll past five pages of info to get to the summary. Yeah, the summary with not. <laughs> Yes, yeah. no. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right, John, hit us with everything you know about this. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you guys could look at the shadows as well. Oh, we wanted to talk about a Kingston pool when yeah. you brought this up. Fair point, fair point. Dug myself the hell there. Um, not a pool. But they had... <laughs> nice. We, we, the, nice. Well, it said, it said that the, there's about 7,000... So the hope but LGA, so the local government authority, they've got um, – there's about 7,000 rental properties and yep. of that about 6% has been lost to the Airbnb market, which which was about like full um, full property where um, it once would have been – might have been a rental property but now the whole house is used exclusively for Airbnb, not partially let as in, you know, the owner's still living there and rents out the room from time to time, yep. the whole house. So that was about – um, you know, about 500 or well, four to 600 properties for Hobart. So mm-hmm. about 6% of the total rental properties available. Um, and when I suppose what I was curious about this then is that they're saying that they want to put um, restrictions on Airbnb to try and limit that market. But what they're really talking about is 600 properties in effect. Um, and I might not be doing it justice. But the other thing that report went into is that we are already, you know, Hobart alone down by like 3,000 homes behind just for both renters and um, you know, so, new buyers. So the Airbnb market isn't a mass, isn't going to fix the problem is what yeah. everyone blames the Airbnb marketplace, but you're saying it's, just, it's not going to fix the issue. Yeah, it seems to me that you know, if you're looking at that 80-20 rule, what's going to bring the, the biggest result is that the idea being that they they put constraints around the Airbnb market, hoping that it might free up another 100 properties, is not going to have a real It's like effect. putting a Band-Aid onto a broken leg kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And so the proposals that they looked to, to showcase was they wanted to set up a whole new, um, a whole new government um, uh, section dedicated to forecasting the future of housing um, for a- the Airbnb market. Yeah, uh, that's not exactly right. So forgive me. Uh, but then they would say there'd be additional taxes. They would put permits on um, l- limiting the amount within sp- you know specific areas, areas. based on um, you know, the, and then also having additional um, planning requirements relating to zoning. Okay. Uh, 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but did the Airbnb market in Hobart really take off though because there was a lack of actual hotel rooms available? Like I used to work in the hotel industry and a big weekend would – like an event was on in town. Yep. Every hotel was fully booked out every single day. So that was yeah. a clear indication that there wasn't enough houses for the amount of people that were coming down. For yeah, events. for sure. Mm. So there's been a huge amount of new hotels built in Hobart recently and there's still another two or three to open in the coming oh, definitely, yeah. years. Like will that ease pressure on people? Like, like you know, you – the Airbnb market exists because there's good money in it at the moment. Yeah. But if there's more hotel rooms available. And it's a, and affordable, affordable to go to a newer hotel. Then, then what's the advantage? Like you're going to go a hotel in the centre of town versus a Airbnb out in the middle of North Hobart. Yeah. Like, mm. So would that as well then limit the amount of Airbnbs if there's not as much profit? Well, I mean, I was um, in chatting with different clients along the way who have had um, those properties available went back into the um the, go back into the rental market when it's just you know the the short term accommodation doesn't make sense for them financially um so I, it seems to me too when you think about when I've traveled and there's a group of you know six people you can stay longer in an area because you can hire a house and use that entire space rather than all of you getting six individual rooms all paying you know four times as much as you have to to stay in that area for longer yeah it's a really mm-hmm. tricky one i know where we're talking about a wedding in townsville um start of next year and rather than kind of be like oh let's all book these things we're thinking oh well we'll look into a eight person house yeah. so i guess yeah i'm a i'm a really bad one to, to talk about this because i'm all for airbnb I oh think it's great Abby and i've used it heaps when we've traveled overseas yeah. well and i but think when when oh sorry to interrupt mate. no it's but, i understand totally where you're coming yeah. from yeah because yeah. when there's a bigger group of you then you can get the cost of the thing down and it makes perfect sense well it, it struck me and i hope i, I hope it um you know i am correct in interpreting the report when it said that in the end it's taken about six percent out of the rental market, so you know that's only it's it's six percent. If it was if if Airbnb had taken fifty percent of available properties out of the rent, you'd be like, oh, this is a, a problem. There's a real big deal here. Yeah. Um. But the idea being that right, let's just say the regulation in 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 a good sense enables a twenty percent difference. So that's taken away and you know that's freed up maybe a hundred two hundred properties. That's not even near, anywhere close to either what they the own report says is the biggest issue, which is the lack of available housing. So, so it's kind of like let's just throw some mud at something else and try and get it to stick to that rather than actually deal with the real problem. Or yeah. we don't have an answer for the real problem at the moment, so we'll just keep playing shadow games, pushing it around. Yeah, and that, it's just like the, the, you could have a whole other government um, section. You could do all these requirements. In the end, it, it generate more taxes for the people um, that are, you know, are using the Airbnb market. Um, and at the same token too, it would have like this, uh, not even a, a barely – well, slither of an effect on the actual greater problem. We've talked about it before. Like I think that people like to use Airbnb as the excuse why the Hobart rental marketplace is stuffed. Yeah. Like everyone says, oh, case. it's just that the Airbnb is what's stuffed it over. But at the end of the day, it's lack of development and lack of like future development opportunities. Yeah. Yep. Um, medium density, like being able to build multiple properties on one location, all of those things to help create opportunities for more housing to to mm. handle the amount of people coming back. But then the argument is there's too many people here so then we need more transit opportunities. So yeah. there's a huge amount of problems that need to be sort of worked out and they all compound on each other. They sure do and what an amazing show that we've put together where we've covered across all of those issues. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Well played to us and, and the weather as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure... Sponsored people, by MKH, the weather was. And people do need to have a swim from occasion but it's a shame we ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to let us go on about the pool. <laughs> We're done. The pool is out. <laughs> oh, have we, have we got have we got time? No, no you've no got way. it. You've got it. <laughs> we got we're calling it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was excellent, boys. Thank you to the crew at MKH Contracting for having a bit of fun with us and uh, sh- throwing us some of their gear. They do do really, really good work. Really good work, yeah. Um, if they're still awake, um, Marcus and Kristen, <laughs> shout out to you guys for being a supporter of the Property Pod and 414 Property Co. Much appreciated. And we will talk to everybody next week on next week's episode of the Property Pod, sponsored by Apple. <laughs> 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 the fruit. The fruit, yes. <laughs> yeah. no, no specific uh, ties to any. Uh... <laughs> All right, guys. We'll talk to you next See week. Ya. See ya. You're listening to the Property Pod.
Pod, recorded and edited by 414 Media House in conjunction with 414 Property Co. This podcast is general information only and the thoughts and views expressed is the opinion of our panel and listeners should always seek their news, their own investigation into any topic we discuss to ensure they fully understand their own situation. It does not constitute and should not be relied on as purchasing, selling, financial or investment advice or recommendations expressed or implied and it should not be used as an invitation to take up any agent or investment services. No investment decision or activity should be undertaken on the basis of the